Hi, welcome to Flooring Models. Today we're going to be looking at some tools, um, primary uh, photo etch or photo etch type scribing tools and saws and why we would use them. Okay, so down here we got a little selection. Now, to be honest, these Airways ones turned up yesterday. Uh, amazingly, I ordered them because I needed something. I've got an upcoming project. It's going to be a lot of detail work, sawing, things like that. Um, and I find my usual saw, which to be honest is a great one. This is the um, Checkmaster Kits uh, saw. I got the blades down in here and everything else like this. Very nice, very fine, but I just find them a little bit clumsy. Great for doing bigger areas, but if I need to get into anywhere small, then um, I just need something a little bit more refined. Um, at the same time, I have to thank Steve Campbell, who has sent me these Tamiya ones. Now, technically, they call them saws, uh, but this one over here is for rescribing work. It is that fine and very, very detailed. So the whole point of these saws is that they're really fine and can do incredibly sharp detail work, okay, finer than you could ever get with a traditional saw or rescribing tools and things like that. So I thought we'd have a little look at it. So having a look, start off with, if we have a look at the, the Airways one. Now the Airways one, as you can see, it's just a little bit of photo etch. It's stuck down on here. Obviously it's made by Hannant's and this is what you get. Now I had every option or thought of putting it into here, my little holder, which to be honest, I've pre-done a Tamiya one in there, which I'll show you in a moment. Unfortunately, you know, the back part of these are a little bit big. I need a bigger saw handle to actually get it. But normally what happens is you've got your standard sort of swan uh, Morton handles and things like that. That will fit these absolutely fine. Those will go in here and the way you go. Unfortunately, as you know, I don't use knives like that because I am totally clumsy. This is technically my only true knife with a proper blade in it. All the rest of the time I use disposable ones with Olaf blades in there. I find them really easy to use um, and I don't stab myself, cut myself. And since I've been using that and a pair of scissors to do everything, my injuries have halved. Uh, basically what you got there, we can show these just as a demo. These have got extremely fine blades. Now hopefully the overhead can see as well. As you can see, these are very, very fine. Some nice teeth on there. This is probably more your coarse one, but as you can see from this guy over here, this has got extremely fine teeth on it, which you could probably use for scribing work as well and everything else. They are really very, very nice. And then you've got a couple of curved ones, again, in the coarse form. Okay, so this would be handy for getting in if you need to use any part of the blade instead of it just being flat. So if you're doing a little small area, something else like that, you need to get into a cornerish. You can get in here just with this guy here because he is very sharp and curved. And then you've got the other one which has got a little bit more curve on it. Curves all the way around like a chainsaw, okay, with a finer blade again. So you do get both types of blade in this particular pack, which is quite handy, okay. So how they're actually going to work is normally, as I say, you'd have this in a saw area. As you can see, Buster's out of retirement again. Okay, we've got lots of stuff going on down here. I've got a panel line, to be honest, so we're just going to pop this in a panel line and we're just going to have a little cut with it. And as you can see, it cuts beautifully. Normally you'd have this in a, an area and that's going through. Absolute treat. Very nice, very sharp, clean cut. No problem with that. So, sorry Buster, we're going to do another one just down in here. Okay, and you can use these loose as well. These have got very good rigidity. They're not going to bend and wobble, but as you can see, they cut very fine, no problem at all. Then if you wanted to do a finer bit of detail work, then obviously you could use one of these blades. This is a lot finer. It's got finer teeth, a lot nicer. Okay, and apart from me wobbling around, the reason it's chipping off the paint is because obviously, as you know, Buster's had a hard life and lots of things on here. But generally, if you were to be using like a scribing tool, as you can see, you can use it for that as well. All right, so if you wanted to put in some nice little sharp lines, you'd use one of these with a very fine blade and you can just get around there and you can put these in. And for instance, if we pick somewhere that has got some panel lines, perhaps we can see still perhaps on this one, bless him. Okay, but generally you might be able to sort of come along with something like this. Okay and you can pop panel lines, things like that, bits of detail back in by using a blade, which I know a lot of people don't usually think of. These curved ones, which we'll look at at the moment on the other side again, the great thing about these is they can get right into little corners. If you're doing curves and things like that, it will help, but you can just use the edge of it like this. So for instance, if you were down in here, you could literally just run. Okay, or if you wanted to just use it as a saw, then obviously you can. But because it's got a bit of an edge on here, you can get in here 
into tight little spots and corners and things if you were coming down in here and all those areas. Very handy little tools to have, okay? Now, the ones that Steve have sent me, which are these Tamiya ones, okay, which to be honest, we've got two types down in here. I've already got this one here in, purely because it looks like a Japanese warrior type sword anyway. Now this is bladed all the way round, okay? So the great thing with this is it's got a curve on it. So if you are cutting something slightly curvy, it's gonna adhere extremely well. So you can just pop it in. And you might notice the difference between the two. This has got a lot finer blade. If you look at these, these are incredibly thin, they're very wobbly, but they will give you a very nice cut just like this, okay? So you can get in there, or if you wanted to use the other side, you can use the, the flat side as well, okay? So you can just pop it in. And if you wanted to, you would be off cutting it just like that. Okay, so how do these actually work? Literally, they are photo etch, all right? So in the pack, you're gonna get, and I must admit, Tammy do them very nice, a system where it clips on, nice piece of card, and you've actually got them just down like this. And then basically, as you would normal photo etch, you would just ping them off. So we just cut through them on these. They have got very nice. Now, you wanna be careful how you cut them because you don't wanna be doing something near the blade. So just be a little bit mindful because you don't wanna kink it if you're cutting them. Most of them, they're off of the blade, okay? But then all you have is down in here, so you could use a holding fold, to be honest, I just normally do it by hand, but <clears throat> if you have got some bending bits and pieces just like this, I'm just trying to make sure how this one folds, okay? So this one's gonna be a very nice easy job of the entire thing is gonna fold that way. And then this guy, so basically all the detail is to the outside, okay? And then once you get in there, you can just give it a fold. Remember, make sure you're good at which direction you're gonna go. Okay, and that gives you your saw. So this is your standard more saw. And then all that happens is you can just take them out. To be honest, the first time they go in, they can be a little bit troublesome to get in. If your blade is like mine, a little bit big. And then, so what I tend to do is Now, take the handle right the way out, okay, and as I say, because sometimes it can just be a little bit thick for that first time to sort of squeeze in, so I start down the bottom, and you can just sort of, because <clears throat> obviously you've got various bits in here, like this is a classic example, it's just a little bit thick, alright, and then you can pop it up. Get it in there, line it all up. Just need to push this back slightly. Make sure it's all in. All right, and then you can drop it down and in. But just be mindful; these aren't your standard saw blades and things like that because these are photo etch. So they're actually going to bend. So make sure they're in there, square, nice and tight and everything else just like that, so you've got it in there. But just be mindful that you are gonna get a lot of bendy movement. They're gonna be a lot more bendy than you ha normally have. So when you are cutting and coming in here, we just do another one here, you're gonna have all this wobble, okay? So when you're doing it, it's gonna be very easy to get wonky lines. So just be careful that you're probably here of how this is cutting. that beautiful cut line in there, no problem at all, okay? And as I say, you can literally use it if you wanted to for rescribing work, for doing any type of work you like. Now, the other pack we got down here, these are fine blades. So if we just open up this guy, okay. I'll just pop that out of the way and then I'll pop one of these out. So let's just grab a little guy just here. So again, just being careful not to bend the photo etch. Okay, and then to be honest, I am lazy. I just bend it normally like this because it doesn't take too much. Okay, but I usually give 
because of the flat edge on these you can crimp them right down. They are done as well so this is a 0.1 and that blade is absolutely microscopic, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just gonna pop this guy out. Again, once they've been in and out a few times, I found that they actually are no problem. Now this is uber thin, so I imagine this should poke straight in, which it does, okay? So we can just seat him in there. Now this is described as a rescribing tool rather than a saw and you can feel it when you do it with your finger the blade is extremely fine so again let me just bring buster over what we're going to do we're just going to try him for panel lines so i'm just going to as i normally would got my little scribing templates okay so we're just going to try and use it as a scriber all right, so we're just going to pop this in like here. So we're just going to imagine there is a panel line running just down here. And hopefully you can see that is very, very fine. And in fact, that is absolutely beautiful to use as well. That is so easy to use. So let's try it on something a little bit more uh, curvy fied, perhaps down the end here. Let's just imagine we were coming in with a curve. See, this is the only thing, because it bends, if it doesn't like what it's going into, it can come off, but very, very fine lines. So you could use it just for one direction, or you can use it for both. Again, we're just gonna clean out and sort out a little bit of this panel line work just down in here so the beauty about using this for rescribing is that it will do it on the push and on the pull all right so you don't have to worry about it in one direction or the other the blade top if you can hopefully you can see it against you catch it in the light you can see it's slightly bulbous on the top as well so you could in theory i'm guessing use it upside down this guy it's my favorite okay so let's just try it upside down because it said it is slightly bulbous on one side and just one pull beautiful work really like that that is actually fantastic for rescribing because it's more accurate and the trouble is when you're doing it normally with the pea cutter and things like that they tend to jump out where this is slicing through but the great thing is the line is a perfect trench and you can be very accurate, like here I was just messing around, but we've gone right to the line. I imagine you can, because you can see exactly where you're going to, you can put it any way you want. Now bearing in mind that obviously this is for straights, you wouldn't be using this on a curved surface because it's too big uh, and everything else like that. But generally I have to say, very, very impressed. We'll just try a little bit of uh, following a panel line just down on here, just to see. But also, it's very easy to see where you are. Now, as you said, this is at a million coats. You can see we've got silver paint coming through and everything else. So it is going to clog the blade. But I imagine if you were doing just this onto normal plastic, you would have no problem. And it does seem to be one pull is around about what you would want. It's the sort of desired effect there. But again, you say lots of paint, but you can see it's not jumping and traveling off on its own and all the rest of it. And even when we try and do, if we just do a straight line, you can see it is straight. It's not like you're wobbling and all the rest of it. So actually I am incredibly impressed with that one. That one really, really is very nice. Uh, so let me just make sure we get the right blurb on this one. So this guy over here, is the thick blade type. This is the saw. Okay, so your item number on this particular one here is a Tamiya item 74097-800. Okay, this is a fine um, craft saw two for scribing. Thickness 0.1 millimeter. So down on here, as you can see, we've got various other 
type so you've got a standard flat on this one here we've got a beautiful curve here they've all got that slight edge on the top of them so you can do it so down here you've got standard sort of flat ones okay and then down here you've got curved all the way through so you've actually got although they're mentioned as being c b and a i don't think there's much between them okay i can't see there's a tiniest obviously difference in the blades that's what it is so a is the finest then we've got b then we got C, so it's actually that's what it is. And then um, C, D, and E obviously are going to get thicker. This one here is actually the coarse one of this type, which you would never know. It's very, very fine, but that is the difference between these. So if you're doing a very fine job, then obviously you could use this one, which is D. That's extremely fine down just down in here. Uh, e is getting a little bit more coarse. This is this one when it's all folded up because you hear is pretty much. In fact, it looks finer. I've hard to see how it, they've done the numbering here uh, but definitely this one here C is finer than E and then D is finer again a little bit weird how they've done their numbering but hey ho all right but yeah very very nice so I would highly recommend these guys and in fact I know Steve put a little note to me when he did it he said that he's finding these uh, indispensable now and probably replacing a lot of other tools I can imagine this replacing scribing for normal flat work because it is very very nice it's very forgiving the curve seems to I don't know cancel out your own movements things like that so definitely a very good must on that one and then these guys which are actually for the the thicker ones, which is your Tamiya number 74105-800. Okay, these are 0.15 thickness saws. So if you're after a razor saw and you don't want to go along things with the handles and you can change them out quite quickly, you might want to go for something like this. My only downside to this is I am incredibly lazy and it would drive me nuts to have to keep changing these over. So what I would probably end up doing is perhaps buying some cheap disposable, you can get them. I did have one in here, oh, I still got it. Yeah, I've got one, I did have two, I'm just looking for my second. But you can buy just handles, which actually, I assume, uh, this one, I can't remember how it was now. I had one of these and it was double-ended anyway. Um, but you could be able to change over the end of them, very, very easy. In fact, maybe I'll do it on that one. Okay, but you can get obviously just normal handles. These are dirt cheap off of eBay and things like that. Or if not, even uh, you can get, I'm just thinking, I'm sure I did have them, wider versions of your normal pin ones as well, which are great for holding and do it. The pin ones I should imagine will hold this quite well because you get different ends on them and things like that. But I would say, highly highly recommended these tamiya ones are absolutely beautiful which is one of those things because steve has sport me by sending these because these ones aren't as nice uh these are the airways one they're very crude and very sort of you know cutting let's face it these are saws at the end of the day if you're cutting something with a saw then you want to go with these guys but they're very similar how they work to one of these okay after being sport by doing those the tamiya ones yeah, they're a little bit lump and cutting and the difference in the thickness as well. This is pretty much, I don't know what thickness these are, but they're very thick. The only good thing about these is that they're very strong. They don't bend as much as obviously the photo etch ones, but in the photo etch ones, I'm not sure how long they would last, but for detail work, for refined work, and let's face it, that's why I bought these, then that's what I would do. But if you can't get the Tamiya ones, and I must admit, I don't know if they're readily available in the UK, as I say, these have been sent over to, from the States for me, then this would be your second option to do something else like this. But because you can see the height difference on here, it's not like having it in here where it's nice and small and refined and you can see everywhere you're going and doing rescribing uh, and all details like that. But I can certainly understand why he sent them over to me. Thank you very much, Steve, for doing that. And I literally give this my highest recommendation yet because for the first time this is a tool where I can imagine myself using it all the time okay I'm giving up my scribing tools and let's face it you've all seen my scribing videos I've got every type of pea cutter there is I've got needles pins dental tools you name it I've got it that is just so easy to use it just slices through no problem at all with a great deal of accuracy and that's what I find when you're doing scribing you need that accuracy as soon as you jump off you move elsewhere it can be a little bit of a headache but this I find really comfortable very natural and easy to use so there we go that is Airwaves razor saws I'm going to call them versus Tamiya's 
very fine, extremely fine, because we are talking 0.15 and 0.1 millimeter thickness, which means you're gonna have beautiful panel lining, and if you wanted to cut something, minimal damage all around it, because you're just gonna take out a minimal amount of plastic between uh, and everything else like that. So if you were doing a door, for instance, uh, and you wanted to cut out an excess panel, you're not gonna have a huge gap uh, okay, it's going to be basically the right size and take out all the material you want to around there, giving you a equally fitting door. So if you did want to put it in the sort of semi-open position, it's not going to look a bit funny and a bit small as they can, and I've seen in the past. So there we go. That's Tamiya's, uh, what they call their high quality um, uh, fine craft saws. Uh, two and three set that was. Uh, I've got the numbers on that one and the Airways ones definitely are highly recommended. Thank <laughs> you.